The University of Michigan, frequently referred to simply as Michigan, is a public research university located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, United States. Originally, founded in 1817 in Detroit as the Catholepistemiad, or University of Michigania, 20 years before the Michigan Territory officially became a state, the University of Michigan is the state's oldest university. The university moved to Ann Arbor in 1837 onto 40 acres of what is now known as Central Campus. Since its establishment in Ann Arbor, the university campus has expanded to include more than 584 major buildings with a combined area of more than 34 million gross square feet spread out over a central campus and north campus and has two satellite campuses located in Flint and Dearborn. The university was one of the founding members of the Association of American Universities, considered one of the foremost research universities in the United States. The university has very high research activity and its comprehensive graduate program offers doctoral degrees in the humanities, social sciences and STEM fields as well as professional degrees in architecture, business, medicine, law, pharmacy, nursing, social work and dentistry. Michigan's body of living alumni comprises more than 500,000. Besides academic life, Michigan's athletic teams compete in Division I of the NCAA and are collectively known as the Wolverines. They are members of the Big Ten Conference. History the University of Michigan was established in Detroit in 1817 as the Catholepistemiad, or University of Michigania, by the governor and judges of Michigan Territory. The Rev. John Monteith was one of the university's founders and its first president. Ann Arbor had set aside 40 acres in the hopes of being selected as the state capital when Lansing was chosen as the state capital. The city offered the land for a university. What would become the university moved to Ann Arbor in 1837 thanks to Governor Stevens T. Mason. The original 40 acres was the basis of the current central campus. The first classes in Ann Arbor were held in 1841, with six freshmen and a sophomore, taught by two professors. Eleven students graduated in the first commencement in 1845. By 1866, enrollment increased to 1,205 students, many of whom were Civil War veterans. Women were first admitted in 1870. James Burrell Angel, who served as the university's president from 1871 to 1909, aggressively expanded UM's curriculum to include professional studies in dentistry, architecture, engineering, government, and medicine. UM also became the first American university to use the seminar method of study. Among the early students in the School of Medicine was José Celso Barbosa, who in 1880 graduated as valedictorian and the first Puerto Rican to get a university degree in the United States. He returned to Puerto Rico to practice medicine and also served in high-ranking posts in the government. From 1900 to 1920, the university constructed many new facilities, including buildings for the dental and pharmacy programs, chemistry, natural sciences, hill auditorium, large hospital and library complexes, and two residence halls. In 1920, the university reorganized the College of Engineering and formed an advisory committee of 100 industrialists to guide academic research initiatives. The university became a favor choice for bright Jewish students from New York in the 1920s and 1930s, when the Ivy League schools had quotas restricting the number of Jews to be admitted. Because of its high standards, UM gained the nickname Harvard of the West, which became commonly parodied in reverse after John F. Kennedy referred to himself as a graduate of the Michigan of the East. Harvard University, in his speech proposing the formation of the Peace School while on the front steps of the Michigan Union. During World War II, UM's research supported military efforts, such as U.S. 
Navy projects in proximity fuses, PT boats, and radar jamming. After the war, enrollment expanded rapidly and by 1950, it reached 21,000, of which more than one-third were veterans supported by the GI Bill. As the Cold War and the space race took hold, UM received numerous government grants for strategic research and helped to develop peacetime uses for nuclear energy. Much of that work, as well as research into alternative energy sources, is pursued via the Memorial Phoenix Project. Lyndon B. Johnson gave his speech outlining his Great Society program as the lead speaker during UM's 1964 spring commencement ceremony. During the 1960s, the university campus was the site of numerous protests against the Vietnam War and university administration. On March 24, 1965, a group of UM faculty members and 3,000 students held the nation's first ever faculty-led teach-in to protest against American policy in Southeast. Asia. In response to a series of sit-ins in 1966 by voice, the campus political party of Students for a Democratic Society, UM's administration banned sit-ins. In response, 1,500 students participated in a one-hour sit-in inside the LSA building, which housed administrative offices. Former UM student and noted architect Alden B. Dow designed the current Fleming Administration Building, which was completed in 1968. The building's plans were drawn in the early 1960s before student activism prompted a concern for safety. But the Fleming Building's narrow windows, all located above the first floor, and fortress-like exterior led to a campus rumor that it was designed to be riot-proof. Dow denied those rumors, claiming the small windows were designed to be energy-efficient. During the 1970s, severe budget constraints slowed the university's physical development, but in the 1980s, the university received increased grants for research in the social and physical sciences. The university's involvement in the anti-missile strategic defense initiative and investments in South Africa caused controversy on campus. During the 1980s and 1990s, the university devoted substantial resources to renovating its massive hospital complex and improving the academic facilities on the North Campus. In its 2011 annual financial report, the university announced that it had dedicated $497 million per year in each of the prior 10 years to renovate buildings and infrastructure around the campus. The university also emphasized the development of computer and information technology throughout the campus. In the early 2000s, UM faced declining state funding due to state budget shortfalls. At the same time, the university attempted to maintain its high academic standing while keeping tuition costs affordable. There were disputes between UM's administration and labor unions notably with the Lecturers' Employees' Organization and the Graduate Employees' Organization, the union representing graduate student employees. These conflicts led to a series of one-day walkouts by the unions and their supporters. The university is engaged in a $2.5 billion construction campaign. In 2003, two lawsuits involving UM's affirmative action admissions policy reached the U.S. Supreme Court. President George W. Bush publicly opposed the policy before the court issued a ruling. The court found that race may be considered as a factor in university admissions in all public universities and private universities that accept federal funding. But, it ruled that a point system was unconstitutional. In the first case, the court upheld the law school admissions policy while in the second it ruled against the university's undergraduate admissions policy. The debate continued because in November 2006, Michigan voters passed Proposal 2, banning most affirmative action in university admissions. Under that law, race, gender, and national origin can no longer be considered in admissions.
UM and other organizations were granted a stay from implementation of the law soon after that referendum. This allowed time for proponents of affirmative action to decide legal and constitutional options in response to the initiative results. In April 2014, the Supreme Court ruled in SCUET v. Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, upholding Proposal 2 under the U.S. Constitution. The Admissions Office states that it will attempt to achieve a diverse student body by looking at other factors, such as whether the student attended a disadvantaged school and the level of education of the student's parents. On May 1, 2014, University of Michigan was named one of 55 higher education institutions under investigation by the Office of Civil Rights for possible violations of federal law over the handling of sexual violence and harassment complaints. President Barack Obama's White House Task Force to Protect Students from Sexual Assault was organized for such investigations. The University of Michigan became more selective in the early 2010s. The acceptance rate declined from 50.6% in 2010 to 26.2% in 2015. The rate of new freshman enrollment has been fairly stable since 2010. Campus The Ann Arbor campus is divided into four main areas, the North, Central, Medical and South campuses. The physical infrastructure includes more than 500 major buildings, with a combined area of more than 34 million square feet or 781 acres. The central and south campus areas are contiguous, while the north campus area is separated from them, primarily by the Huron River. There is also leased space in buildings scattered throughout the city many occupied by organizations affiliated with the University of Michigan Health System. An East Medical Campus has recently been developed on Plymouth Road, with several university-owned buildings for outpatient care, diagnostics and outpatient surgery. In addition to the UM golf course on South Campus, the university operates a second golf course on Geddes Road called Radrick Farms Golf Course. The golf course is only open to faculty, staff and alumni. Another off-campus facility is the Inglis House, which the university has owned since the 1950s. The Inglis House is a 10,000-square-foot mansion used to hold various social events, including meetings of the Board of Regents, and to host visiting dignitaries. The university also operates a large office building called Wolverine Tower in southern Ann Arbor near Briarwood Mall. Another major facility is the Mathea Botanical Gardens, which is located on the eastern outskirts of Ann Arbor. All four campus areas are connected by bus services, the majority of which connect the north and central campuses. There is a shuttle service connecting the university hospital, which lies between north and central campuses with other medical facilities throughout northeastern Ann Arbor. Central Campus Central Campus was the original location of UM when it moved to Ann Arbor in 1837. It originally had a school and dormitory building and several houses for professors on 40 acres of land bounded by North University Avenue, South University Avenue, East University Avenue, and State Street. The President's House, located on South University Avenue, is the oldest building on campus as well as the only surviving building from the original 40-acre campus. Because Ann Arbor and Central Campus developed simultaneously, there is no distinct boundary between the city and university, and some areas contain a mixture of private and university buildings. Residence halls located on Central Campus are split up into two groups the Hill Neighborhood and Central Campus. Central Campus is the location of the College of Literature, Science and the Arts, and is immediately adjacent to the Medical Campus. Most of the graduate and professional schools, including the Ross School of Business, the Gerald R. Ford School of Public Policy, the Law School and the School of Dentistry, are on Central Campus. Two prominent libraries, the Harlan Hatcher Graduate Library and the Shapiro Undergraduate Library, are also on Central Campus. 
as well as museums housing collections in archaeology, anthropology, paleontology, zoology, dentistry and art. Ten of the buildings on central campus were designed by Detroit-based architect Albert Kahn between 1904 and 1936. The most notable of the Kahn-designed buildings are the Burton Memorial Tower and nearby Hill Auditorium. North Campus North Campus is the most contiguous campus, built independently from the city on a large plot of farmland, approximately 800 acres, that the university bought in 1952. It is newer than Central Campus and thus has more modern architecture, whereas most Central Campus buildings are classical or Gothic in style. The architect Hiro Saarinen, based in Birmingham, Michigan, created one of the early master plans for North Campus and designed several of its buildings in the 1950s, including the Earl V. Moore School of Music building. North and Central campuses each have unique bell towers that reflect the predominant architectural styles of their surroundings. Each of the bell towers houses a grand carillon. The North Campus Tower is called Lurie Tower. The University of Michigan's largest residence hall, Bursley Hall, is located on North Campus. North Campus houses the College of Engineering, the School of Music, Theatre and Dance, the School of Art and Design, the Taubman College of Architecture and Urban Planning, and an annex of the School of Information. The campus is served by the Dudestadt Center, which houses the Art, Architecture and Engineering Library. The Dudestadt Center also contains multiple computer labs, video editing studios, electronic music studios, an audio studio, a video studio, multimedia workspaces, and a 3D virtual reality room. Other libraries located on North Campus include the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Library and the Bentley Historical Library. South Campus South Campus is the site for the athletic programs, including major sports facilities such as Michigan Stadium, Chrysler Center, and Yost Ice Arena. South Campus is also the site of the Burr Library Storage Facility, Reveille Hall, home of the Michigan Marching Band, the Institute for Continuing Legal Education, and the Student Theater Arts Complex which provides shop and rehearsal space for student theatre groups. The university's Department of Public Safety and Transportation Services offices are located on South Campus. UM's golf course is located south of Michigan Stadium and Chrysler Arena. It was designed in the late 1920s by Alistair McKenzie, the designer of Augusta National Golf Club in Augusta, Georgia. The course opened to the public in the spring of 1931. The University of Michigan golf course was included in a listing of top holes designed by what Sports Illustrated calls golf's greatest course. Architect The UM Golf Course's signature no. 6 hole, a 310 yard par 4, which plays from an elevated tee to a two tiered. Kidney-shaped green protected by four bunkers, is the second hole on the Alistair McKenzie Dream 18 as selected by a five-person panel that includes three-time Masters champion Nick Foldo and golf course architect Tom Doak. The listing of the best holes Eva designed by Augusta National architect Alistair McKenzie is featured in SI's Golf Plus Special Edition, previewing the Masters on April 4, 2006.